wish I had a top hat for this video. This is Mandy from Mandy Lee Plays and in today's video I am going to give you my thoughts on a hat in time. So let's go. watched my live streams before you would see that I've been live streaming a game called A Hat in Time and I haven't really explained like what kind of game it is. So A Hat in Time was made by an indie developer called Gears for Breakfast. Kind of reminds me of that Spongebob episode where you're trying to get into a salty splatoon is like you have to eat nails without any milk. It reminds me of that Spongebob episode for some reason. And it's a 3D platformer kind of like ukulele, banjo kazooie, um, Mario. It was first released on Steam with very positive reviews and then it got a port to the PlayStation and the Xbox. Uh, sad to say it didn't get a port to the Switch. It screams Nintendo game on it. Maybe in the future, hopefully, but you can still play this game on your PlayStation, on Steam, Xbox. And now onto the story portion. You start off as Hat Kid and she apparently has the power of time and you're in this really cool house kind of reminds me of hello neighbor but not like creepy and scary more like childish and very fun she even has a pool of pillows with a diving board oh they sound so weird though oh she has a, a diving board this girl knows how to live so you could tell the house was made by a kid i don't know if she's a kid because she has the power of time so she looks young and so she puts herself young, but she's secretly an older person? Uh, I'll look into that later. But then a weird guy knocks at her window like a gentleman he is, and she opens it, he takes her hourglass, and then that in turn causes her to lose all her hourglasses and all over the world. So your mission is to get these hourglasses before, you know, time paradox mumbo jumbo stuff occurs. So you're on an adventure to get these hourglasses. They are your MacGuffins. And on your adventures, you meet a colorful cast of characters from from a mustache girl to mobster people, penguins, disco dancing. That looks straight from Club Penguin. And my ultimate least favorite but memorable creepy salesman guy. There, young one. I am from a far away land. Ew. I've seen every corner of the earth, and now I sell tiny pieces of my discoveries. He could give the happy salesman guy from Majora's Mask a run for his money. He twitches a lot and it's just weird. It's weird. <laughs> and again, he's not necessarily scary. He's just creepy. Ugh. So you meet these people along the way and many more. I haven't beaten the game, so I still have a lot of people to meet. As for the controls, you got your basic dirty platformer controls. Hat Kid. Uh, jumps really high and jumps really far like you can get really really far if you jump and then press like the R bumper and you can just glide places she's like a flying squirrel kind of thing go 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 yay I made it <laughs> that's why you always have to try and that leads to a lot of collectibles scattered around the place you could collect yarn, and those yarns can turn into new hats with new abilities. But one of my personal favorites is the blue beanie, and that has some ice magic thing in it, but I just really like it because it's adorable. And you could craft other hats to help you, and some you actually need, because Hat Kid does not really have attacks. She has an umbrella, which you could get from the creepy mask guy, and that really is her attack. But that's not a big deal because there's not really a lot of enemies in the way. There's the occasional bird, but other than than that there's not really any enemies strewn about the place and that's okay for this game because it's focused on the platforming and it makes up for it tenfold with the boss battles those are one of my favorite things about this game the boss battles are so unique so different the different music that plays in the background while you're beating the boss the way you beat the boss is always unique and it has a certain level of challenge where it's not too challenging so the boss battles are just a plus in my opinion a plus and next I want to talk about the stages the stages are beautiful like I love the the uniqueness of each one and it shows that there was a lot of love and passion put into this game 
And that's just the whole thing about this game. You could feel that the developers really put their all in it, their passion in it. And I really admire how Gears for Breakfast made this whole game on an indie budget. But with all that being said, there is some cons to that and that is the game is not really polished in some areas where, you know, it would be. There's a lot of uh, glitches here and there. There is stuff that needs to be polished and cleaned up. And another big thing is the camera. You're gonna battle the camera a lot. I played on the PlayStation 4. For me, the camera wasn't as bad, but it was still a little hassle for me. But I'm just putting it out there because the camera is kind of a little bit off. But so far, I love the game. It's a 10 out of 10 for me. And I'll have all my live streams for the game in the description down below if you wanna check those out to see if you really like it. So with all that being said, if you like the video, please leave me a good like. If you like content like this and my other content, please consider supporting this channel and subscribing. I would appreciate that too and thank you. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. I love hearing from you guys. You can follow me on Twitter at Mandy Lee Plays. I hope you guys have an awesome day and play good game. Bye.